so it's um, it's been a while i think this is the first video i've done uh, in about five months i think um, i've been going out i've just, I've just not been filming uh, you might have seen my little blog post that i did about it but anyway i'm not going to get into that today uh, as the title of the video would suggest and as you can see it's going to be a kit list video um, i've been dialing in my kit and going out trying different things here and there uh, and i've dialed it in for this year so this is the, the kit that I'm planning on using for, for 2024 at least. Um, things may change later on in the year as, as I go through things, but as it stands, this is quite dialed in. I'm quite happy with it so far. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd do a quick kit list video. I know I like watching kit, kit list videos. They give me um, ideas for my own stuff, so yeah, it might be useful to somebody else. So we'll just get straight into it. So as you can see, this is, um, this is the kit. There are a few items that are, are trip specific that will change that I'll, I'll run you through as we go through it uh, but yeah um, we'll get straight into it so first up <clears throat> is my shoes um, this is a three season kit list even though I have got a couple of winter items in that I'll chat about it is primarily three season obviously going to winter then my footwear is going to change it's going to change to Gore-Tex boots and, and maybe B2 boots if I'm doing some mountaineering that requires crampons but yeah for, for long distance three season this is what I'm aiming to use. So I've got my, my trail runners. These are my Solomon Centride Fives. Um, really, really good. Um, dead grippy, dead comfy. Um, they're not Gore-Tex. I don't use Gore-Tex going through three season, especially long distance, because you're guaranteed to get wet. Uh, and a Gore-Tex shoe just won't dry out. Um, these, I can get them soaked, and the heat of my feet through hiking, they, they typically dry in about an hour. Um, they're really, really lightweight as well. So yeah, um, fantastic, fantastic shoes. And what I would say, if you if you want Solomons, do it really are for narrow feet. If you've got wide wide feet, don't bother. Um, next is another new addition. These are my Bedrock Kern sandals. Uh, these come with a Vibram Mega Grip outsole, so they're just as tough, just as durable, and as grippy as something like the um, Solomon or my old Hawkers. Um, but obviously, it being a sandal, great for summer, great for um, anywhere that's really wet because you don't have to worry about getting wet feet. Um, obviously they're quite niche, not, not everybody's going to like these, um, but so far I'm bloody loving them. Um, I've tested them through winter, um, I've took them to around freezing. Um, when it gets to about freezing, they're just on the limit. I went out, it was, it was coming up to freezing temperatures, but my feet were getting wet and there was quite um, quite strong wind, so that wind chill, um, I started getting quite cold feet, so yeah. Uh, around the freezing mark is the limit. Like I said, they're um, quite niche, not gonna be for everybody, but yeah, I, I like them and they're really, really comfortable. So, um, obviously they'll change depending on what I'm doing, where I'm going, and like I said, going into the winter months and I'll switch out to a, more of a, a traditional boot. So in terms of um, in carrying stuff, um, these are my, my items. It's my rucksack and my bum bag both, of which I made myself. Um, these are make your own gear, so these are, they both made with the same material, aerobic nylon and venom stretch mesh. So this is my bum bag. Um, up front I've just got a little glasses wipe for, for wiping glasses down, sunglasses and things. And then it's got a little velcro tab on there. And then typically inside this, um, I love my camera stuff. Like I said, I don't always film, which is why you haven't seen a video for a while. Um, but if I am filming, this is what I take it in. So in here, I've got my GoPro, which is what I typically film on. Um, I've got my Sony RX, which I mainly use for photos. Um, and then I've got my little UltraPod one, tiny little tripod. And it's quite handy that I don't know if you can get these, I think they're discontinued, but there's a little Velcro strap. Um, I can wrap it around my trekking pole, stick it in the ground to make a, a more of a high tripod, or you can strap it to fences or trees and things. So yeah, it's quite a versatile little tripod that. <clears throat> but again, not everybody's gonna take that sort of stuff. Um, so, going to the pack, like I said, make your own gear, aerobic nylon. This is around the 37 litre mark, and it's 330 grams, um, and it's a fully featured pack. Obviously, it's frameless, typically what I use, um, but in the back, you can see there, I've got my, my um, Z-Lite, which makes up the back system. I'll talk you through that when I get into it. So yeah, it's got typical features. So you've got your side pockets for your, your bottles. I've added two top pockets here for adding some additional stuff, as you can see there. Big stretchy front pocket, and then obviously on the bottom, we've got the bottom pocket. Um, mainly use that for food storage when I'm doing long distance stuff, so I can just access food as and when I want when I'm, when I'm hiking. And then we've got the vest style 
running strap system. Um, I, I prefer that to a traditional strap. Um, I just find it much better. And then you get the additional benefits of having nice big pockets on them again for more food storage. So yeah, what we'll do, we'll, um, we'll just explode the pack, go through the items and I'll talk you through it. So we'll start with the um, with vest system. So like I said, food storage up front, obviously no food in there now, but what I have got is my little, my little sort of body glide, um, anti-chafe cream. If you're doing any long distance stuff, honestly, get some of that, you'll thank me later. Um, it, it is a godsend. And then up on the actual shoulder straps, got some little stretchy pockets for water bottles. <clears throat> and I've switched out my B3 in this set, I've still got it, but I've switched out for now at least to these Solomon soft flasks. So these are both 490 mil. Um, that's just a standard soft flask. This one has the Solomon XA water filter, just a hollow fiber filter like the B3. Um, I think that's got a little slightly faster flow rate actually on that one. So yeah, with them together, I can fill it from anywhere with, with that one into this. And then typically in this, I'll put some juice or some electrolytes. So yeah, it's quite a handy system. Next on the side, we've got my, my bottle storage. So because I've got a litre's worth in the soft flask, I've got two 600 ml bottles here. So yeah, it takes me over that two litre mark, which is, is plenty for what I normally use. These are just the normal active pH bottles with the, um, the sports caps. So that's plenty of water storage for what I need. If I was going somewhere that required um, a long water carry, then I've got, um, I've got a knock bladder, two litre bladder in there as well. I could pair with this to take up to four litres. But yeah, like I said, typically two litres is plenty for me. In my little top pocket here, I've got my little first aid kit slash repair kit. Um, I won't run through this in, in its entirety. It's a bit pointless. I think first aid kits are quite personal. Uh, some people are going to need different things than I will. Some people are going to have more knowledge. Um, for example, if you're a paramedic, you'll have more knowledge than me. So you'll have more useful stuff. Um, but yeah, typical stuff in here. Some Ibupro for any painkillers, tick twisters, um, some Imodium, in case um, I get a, a dicky stomach, um, some super glue, some bungee cord, just little bits of repair stuff, DCF tape and stuff. So um, it keeps me going, keeps my kit going basically. Next, we've got my meths for my stove. Um, I like to keep mess on the outside so if it does leak, it's not affecting all my contents. This is a 100ml Speedster backpacking product bottle. Um, this will typically last me two days. Again, if I was going for longer, I'd say I'd multiple bottles or a bigger bottle. Um, next up, we've got some smidge. Um, this has got salted in it, which is the same ingredient that um, picaridin has. So I either use this or soyless picaridin, depending on what I've got at the time. Both roughly about the same. I found them both to work about the same. But yeah, and coming into the summer months, midges, ticks, little shits, you need some, um, you need some repellent for them. Next on this side, you can see my trekking brolly. Again, this is a new addition. This, this got added when I did the West Island Whale last year. Um, and for me, it was fantastic. This comes in, I think it's just under 200 grams. This is the Gossamer Gear one. I got this off Ultralight Outdoor Gear. Um, bought with my own money and my sponsors. I knew that crap. But yeah, it's, um, it's a great bit of kit. Like I said, on the West Island Whale, the rain was on and off. Um, and I didn't have to put a waterproof on, just pop the brolly up, put it back. Um, yeah, it was great and obviously because you ain't got waterproofs on, you're not sweating um, So it's quite pleasurable to use. Obviously, it's not an item for the mountains If you go and do a bit of mountaineering or high up, you're probably not going to take that You're probably just going to use your waterproofs, but for long distance stuff, it's definitely worth a go Next into the front pouch, so summer, winter, whenever I always take my buff and I always take this little, these little pre off gloves um, if you're in the mountains or you're high up somewhere, even in summer, the nights can get a little bit chilly. So it is nice just to have a couple of um, luxury items, just to keep you a little bit cosy. Lastly in this pocket is my, my waterproofs. These are really lightweight, really cheap. I think for both of them, they're coming at about just under 400 grams, I think. Um, dead simple, dead basic, nothing to them. Just a little waterproof pant and then the matching jacket. These are... Mac in a sack, um, like I said, really, really cheap. Go to the Mac in a sack website. Um, little vented back. Uh, the vented back system is not going to really work if you've got a rucksack on, but it is there uh, should you need it. Again, like I said, I don't really like wearing waterproofs because whichever they are, I don't find them breathing. I do sweat them. They're just there as um, a last resort, basically, for me. So, getting 
get into the actual pack. Um, typical of my pack, roll top, little buckle system at the top to get into it, and then got a little cinch strap. And then first up, we've got my, my little sit pad, my little arse pad. Um, this is actually a cut down section from a full length Gram Counter Gear 1.8 form pad. Um, so this is cut down to torso length. Um, I have actually used that um, through summer just as my bed. Um, if you're on nice, spongy, mossy ground and you, and you pick out your campsite, that's, that's totally fine for me. I actually found it quite comfortable. Obviously, the thing with that is the temperature rate. It's only got an R volume of five, so you've only got a small window of usage, really. Um, so for me, it, like I said, it's going to be my, my sit pad and it's going to pair up with the rest of my kit as part of my sleep system, which I'll explain as we get into it. Um, but it only weighs 30 grams. So if you look at a normal traditional sit pad, it weighs more than that and it's smaller. Whereas that, if I'm doing a long distance hike and I want to sit up by a tree and just have a, an hour snooze in the sun, it's, it's long enough for that. And again, it's, it, you can double it, triple it up as a comfortable sit pad. Next, we've got my, my little electrical bag. Uh, the selection of items here. So I've got a 10,000 milliamp power bank and then just charging cables, the usual stuff. Some um, GoPro batteries, my little Nyko NU25 head torch, and my little Rovibon Aurora hand torch. I always like taking two, I like having a backup, because um, I have had a head torch fail in the past and I didn't have another torch because I'm on my phone. So yeah, I like to have a bit of redundancy and that, and that. And then the only other things in there is just little um, charging cables, USB-C, and a micro USB cable. Uh, again, I don't always take all that stuff if I'm not filming. I only really take the power bank and my torches. Next, we've got a little DCF stuff sack. I made this out of some old DCF that I had. Uh, reinforced the bottom with some ripstop. And this is just obviously my, my little peg bag. Typical stuff, I've got some MSR carbon cores, MSR ground hogs, and some nine inch Easterns. And I've got a couple of little two gram titanium needle pegs. Um, I typically use them just like sticking through my sit pad or something so it doesn't blow away. But yeah, usual stuff. <clears throat> Next up is my shelter, and like I said before, this is another item that will change out depending on the trip. Um, but typically for, for low level, long distance, um, benign summer conditions, this is what I'll use. This is the Z-Pax Plex Solo. Um, it's the 0.51 DCF version. Uh, this comes in on my scales at 386 grams, um, which is ridiculous. So like, you can tell it packs very, very small. I could probably get it to pack smaller than that, actually, um, if I rolled it up tighter. Well, I've got no need to. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I, I use on the West Island weight. It was great for that. You've got quite a lot of room in it. Goes up really easy, and like I said, ultra light. Um, but it will be an item that I do change out. Um, if I'm going to change it out, it will be for this. So this is my latest shelter. Um, this is the Mountain Laurel Designs DCF Solo Mid XL. Um, I think the the outer of the Solo Mid weighs roughly the same as the Plex Solo. Um, so when I do change it out, there'll be a little weight increase because with the outer, I've also got the DCF mesh inner from Mountain Laurel Designs. And again, like I said, this is probably about 300 grams more. So when I use these, the solar mini, it's going to be a 300 gram increase weight penalty, but not a great deal. Um, with the, the solar mid, the plan with that is if I'm going somewhere, um, for instance, something like the Sky Trail where the weather might be a little bit more unpredictable, um, I'd rather take the MLD, which can take a lot more weather than the Z-Pack, so then if the weather did get bad, it's not going to it's not going to necessarily be a trip ender. Um, I, I should be able to ride it through with the MLD. Not only that, this is going to be my new winter shelter. So yeah, um, I think like I said, about 650 gram, I think, all in, inner and outer, for a full winter shelter, four season, um, really strong. I think that's going to be fantastic. I've got only time will tell on it. <clears throat> Next, <clears throat> excuse me, is my store system. Um, this is my Storming Norman Titanium Solo System. Um, unfortunately, Norman passed away, so you can't purchase these anymore. Um, but I've, I've modified this one as well, so I'll go through that. So we've got a little Ebony pop slash cup. Um, so that's really lightweight. It all stacks into itself, as you can see. Then you've got the, the Storming um, pop there and the little cosy. So the basis behind this system 
which is um, versatility. So I've got my little homemade 50 mil mess burner, and then we've got the actual corn, which I've modified. So we put the corn together, and then we can use the, the storming pot in there. So I can I can boil some water up for some noodles or something, put my noodles in there. Um, pop the lid on, put them in the cozy, that can be rehydrating and cooking and then I can get a brew on. So I actually cut the back of the corn out so then this ever new cup fits in perfectly and it sits at exactly the same height so it's got the same burn ratio as the pot. So yeah, I think going forward that's going to be fantastic. Like I said, my, my food could be cooking in that and I could be getting a, a cup of soup or a brew on in that um, and I don't have to wait to use the other pot. So yeah, that's, um, that's going to be quite a versatile bit of kit I think. Next up is my, my little toiletry kit. So I've got my juicer spade shovel there, um, a little bit of deodorant, some toilet paper, um, some toothpaste and some hand sanitizer gel and my, my little bamboo toothbrush. Next, we've got a little food bag. So I've not got my food in here. And um, that's obviously trip dependent, so Depends where I'm going. If I'm doing something more long distance like the West Island way, um, I probably won't be carrying food. I'll probably just resupply when I get to shops and, and get sandwiches and things as I go. Um, but I do tend to take coffee, so I do like to have a coffee in the morning. Um, I have tried without it in the summer, and it was okay, but I do like coffee. So yeah, I've got in here, I've just got some sugar, some coffee, some hot chocolate, and uh, some tea bags. So basically that'll go, no matter what I'm doing, that'll go with me. And then, like I said, depending on the trip, um, if, I'm, if I'm doing long distance, I'll re resupply at shops. If I am taking food, it's very basic stuff. Um, I, I don't go out to have a gourmet meal. All I want is calories. So I'll take things like, like ramen noodles, mug shots, cup of soups, something like that. Something that equals about a thousand calories for a meal. And then I'll have snacks on the go. So I'll have M&Ms, jelly babies, um, protein bars, things like that that I, can, that I can boost the calories with throughout the day sit down at night, have that. I don't typically go out to camp. I'm not really into the camping thing. Camping for me is just part of the journey. So when I go out, I like to I like to do some miles and then put up a tent, get a bit of food in and go to sleep. So it's just somewhere for me to sleep. Um, obviously, if you're more predominantly going out to camp, like you walk a short distance, find someone to camp, you're gonna, this isn't gonna work for you. Yeah, for me, food is, is just calories. Um, I, don't, I don't take steaks and stuff like that, it's pointless for me. So, anything that I want to keep dry is kept in a nice, tough bin bag. Um, it works just as well as a dry bag, cheaper and lighter. First up is my pillow. Um, this is quite a cheap pillow, I've got Amazon. It's a Yorkel um, memory foam pillow. So you've got a typical earth pillow in the back that you blow up and it's got a layer of memory foam on top. Um, I did modify it. See there, I've put some flat elastic on the back so I can wrap it around an air pad or, or a, a Z light, anything like that. Just keep it in place, stop it pinging off at night around the tent. Next, we've got my base layers, which I switched out. I used to use my Heli Hansen Merino base layers. Um, I still sometimes take them in the winter months just to double up, but typically these are what I'll be using from now on. So these are my Senti Designs Alpha 90 leggings and my Alpha 90 hoodie um, as you can see i'm wearing another one this is the alpha 60 this is what i typically hike in because this is um, a lot thinner a lot more breathable these are a heavyweight version of the same thing uh, i tend to use these just just at night time so once i've got my tent set up and i'm kicking back i'll throw them on for comfort uh, and sleep in them because it does beef up your sleep system and obviously if it's a colder morning the day after you can keep the leggings on can't you and, and just hike in them for a while and take them off later on but yeah they're really really nice and like i said extremely breathable and you're not going to make it out on camera, but you can actually see through the actual fabric. Uh, and then when you put anything over it, like a windproof or a shell or a waterproof, then it starts heating up and returning the heat. It's really, really good. Next up, we've got my spur socks. These are 360 dry. Um, so even if I'm using the sandals, I'll still have a pair of socks like this for the evening. Um, if, I, if I was taking the sandals, I'd probably take my gingers as spur socks because they're obviously tall socks and they'll, they'll work well with the sandals. But yeah, the 360 dry, um, obviously waterproof socks, and because they're waterproof, they're actually quite warm as well. They quite um, they retain quite a bit of heat. So, like I said before, the, the trail runners, 
you're gonna get wet feet at some point, you just do. The trail runners typically dry, but if, for instance, you was to get your feet wet really, really late on in the day, as you was approaching camp, and they're not gonna have time to dry, then you can pop your 360 dries on, and at least then when you put your feet in your shoes, they're not getting wet. So what we've got now is my sleeping bag. Um, this is uh, quite an old bag, this. I, I, don't, I think they're discontinued now. This is the Rav Infinity 300, um, so it's like a zero degree bag, comes in at 620 grams on my scales, um, and it's really, really good actually, it's quite, quite a nice bag. Obviously, I've said previously, I'm not a massive lover of, of bags because I'm a toss, I toss and turn at night, and um, I get tangled up in them a bit, but when I did switch out to a quilt, because I toss and turn so much during the night, I found that I was letting heat out and drafts in. Um, so yeah, it's a swings and roundabout thing, I suppose. I think it's just trial and error. So I've ended up back at the bag. Uh, luckily, I didn't sell it, I kept it, because it is a good bag. Um, I could probably shave maybe 200 grams off if I switched this out to something like an Enlightened Equipment Enigma or a Thermo S Vespa style quilt. And like I said, though, the quilts didn't really work that well for me. And to shave off 200 grams, it's gonna cost me about 350 quid. So yeah, for now, I'm gonna stick with that. I said everything goes inside a nice thick bin bag and then last but not least in the back is my, my, my bed basically. This is the Thermarest Z-Lite Sol, um, closed cell foam. It's actually cut down, it's not a full, it's not a tall sole one, um, but it's not full length. I cut quite a few panels off it um, to get it down to this length. I think this is about 236 grams <clears throat> and obviously Folded like that, it does fit perfectly in my rucksack, so it makes it packing a little bit easier because otherwise, yeah, quite bulky. Um, if I'd not cut it down, it probably wouldn't have fitted in because it would have took up too much room. Because it's, I think I've cut about four or five panels off, maybe so yeah, it would have been about that thick. But the plan <clears throat> and the reason for taking this is one, I don't really find earth, earth pads comfortable. I've tried loads, Seed to Summit, um, my Thermarest ones, I don't find them comfortable and I tend to roll off them a lot. Um, this I do actually find quite comfortable. Obviously, you, 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 you've got to be quite selective if you can. You're not going to go pitch on a rock. Well, I won't pitch on a rock if I had an air pad. So, um, yeah, it work out fine for me. Obviously, you can't use it in winter. It's not going to be warm enough. You can, you can pair it with an air pad in winter like I've done before. I've used this and my x Lite, and I've used this on my X-Therm. But for, for three season use, I think this will work fine for me. Um, might not be for everybody. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but yeah. Uh, the benefit to it for me is it's indestructible, you can't puncture it, so mainly for the long distance stuff, if you're on a long distance hike, you're away for a week, 10 days, 2 weeks, and you pop your air pad, then that could end the trip, whereas this, um, it's not going to pop, so I know I'm going to be fine, I'm going to have somewhere to sleep at night, uh, and not only that, if you've done a 30 mile day, the last thing I want to do when I'm putting my tent up is have to blow up an air pad, I just want to get my tent up with this, I can just throw it out, my bed's done. Uh, like I said earlier, then I can pair it with this. If I want a little bit more heat, I can place that on top like that. So it'll just boost the heat a little bit. But what I typically use this for is lob it in half like that. That'll then go at the foot with my rucksack there. So my body is on the, on the Z-Lite sole and my feet are on this and my rucksack. So it basically makes a full length bed then. Uh, but it's more versatile, so I've got a bed, a sit pad. It's, it's just a little bit more versatility and a bit more redundancy as well. So yeah. That's what I'm planning on using um, going forward for the rest of this year. Obviously, things might change here and there, but I, like I said, for the last four or five months, I have been dialing in this kit and trying things and switching them out and, and putting things back, and, etc. Uh, and I think now I'm, I'm at a point where I'm happy with it. I think it, it's very versatile. It's got everything that I need there. Um, the entire loadout, <clears throat> including the camera equipment, the GoPro, the bum bag and so on, everything all in is 4.2 kilos. Um, obviously, that doesn't include food and water, like I said, primarily because of, it depends where I'm going. If I'm going on a long distance hike where I can resupply, then I'll only ever carry, at the maximum, a litre of water. Usually more than like 500 mil, and I'll just keep filling up every time I've entered that 500 mil. Uh, and then I'll just get food from shops. If I'm going somewhere where I do need to carry food, for, even if it's just for a couple of days to get me between, between shops, like I said, it's only going to be ramen, noodles, mug shops, cup of soups, things like that. So it's really lightweight, white stuff anyway. So if I added some food to this load out, probably, I don't know, five kilos maybe, five and a half. Add 
half a litre or six kilos. I'm not getting any heavier than that. And like I said, that is including everything. I could probably shave off maybe half a kilo if I did switch out the water crease to something like the on halos and I switched out the, the bag to another quilt. But like I said, to do so, to switch out both of them items, it's probably going to cost me four, 450 quid to, to bring it down by that half a kilo. Is it worth it? Um, in my eyes, not at the minute, no, because I've got a, a decent enough weight there. It's, it's more than manageable. Anyway, I'm just I'm rambling on now. Um, like I said, kit lists, hopefully um, you found something of use with that. Um, I don't know when I'm going to film again. I probably will be filming stuff in the future, um, but I don't know when and I don't know how often. I'm just From now on going forward, I'm just going to film what I want to film when I want to film it. Um, the long distance things, then I probably will film them because I want to keep them for memories. Um, any overnight stuff, I'm trying to not do overnight stuff going forward. I want to do at least at least two nights. It, it makes it more worthwhile going out. <clears throat> but yeah, we'll see. We'll see when I film anything. Like I said, hope you found something useful out of that. Um, I'll see you whenever I film anything again.